From the University of Florida's College of Journalism and Communications, you're watching WUFT News. At rallies across the nation, people speak out against the potential overturning of Roe v. Wade, the 70s landmark ruling on abortion. The weekend event you see here in Tampa drew hundreds of protesters. This is a WUFT News update. I'm Anna Bernstein. Our digital team covered the rally in Gainesville. Here are some of the images captured as our reporter interviewed women worried about the threat to abortion rights. If Roe is overturned and a state privacy ruling is overturned, Florida's new law will take effect to ban almost all abortions after 15 weeks. This rally was called Bans Off Our Bodies, and you'll find the full report from reporter Carissa Allen at WUFT.org. Buffalo is reeling after a supermarket mass shooting that police say was motivated by racial hatred. The suspect had a recent incident in high school and may have planned additional attacks. NBC's Chris Pallone is in Buffalo with more on the investigation. Two days after what police are calling a racially motivated massacre here in Buffalo, New York, and the investigation continues already today. We've seen teams of FBI agents going into the Tops Friendly Market to take a look at the crime scene. Also, investigators say that they are pouring through the accused gunman who is now in custody. They're pouring through his social media posts. They're looking at computers and phones. They're also looking at a 180-page document that authorities believe he posted online two days before this attack. Authorities say that this suspect, Peyton Gendron, from about 200 miles away from here, came here on Friday, allegedly checked out the area. Police say he was specifically targeting this neighborhood because it is a predominantly black neighborhood. Today, we're learning a lot more about the victims in this attack. Among them, there were many parents. There were also a deacon at a church and a woman who ran a food bank. Today, this community still stunned wrapping its arms around the victims and their families as they try to come to grips with exactly what happened here on Saturday afternoon as people simply went about their lives going grocery shopping like so many of us do. That's the latest from Buffalo, New York. I'm Chris Pallone. Now back to you. We're learning more about the school intruder shot and killed by a police officer in West Palm Beach. 33-year-old Roman Phelps crashed a van through a locked gate to get on the campus of an art school on Friday. Witnesses say he broke away from the school resource officer and ran into the auditorium. An off-duty officer hearing the call for backup confronted Phelps. Police say Phelps attacked the officer, which led to the use of deadly force. Friends of Phelps have come forward saying he was a school alum in need of mental health treatment. They think he was just trying to get arrested and did not intend to harm anyone. Jury selection is moving to the next phase for Parkland school shooter Nicholas Cruz. He pled guilty, but a jury is needed to decide whether to recommend the death penalty. For instance, one potential juror was released today after saying she believed the death penalty may be warranted for a case like this. The slow process will continue to look for 12 jurors and 8 alternates. Once a jury is seated, the sentencing trial is expected to take many weeks as well. There was a happy ending for a South Florida woman who lost consciousness while driving her car. It happened last week in Boynton Beach. Lori Raber later said it was a combo of high blood pressure medication and fasting that caught up with her. As her car drifted into a busy intersection, people rushed to come to her rescue and control the small car. The Good Samaritans were honored on Friday. Along with Raybor, they will each get a free cruise and $2,000 in gift cards. And finally, if you've been to UF at night lately, you may have noticed the blue lighting at Century Tower. That started with a ceremony Friday night to wrap up National Police Week. This year was also a tribute to Gerald James Williams, UPD's first black officer in the 60s who recently passed away. That's our time for now, but WUFT News is always on at WUFT.org.